Hello folks, in this video I'm going to continue working on this tic-tac-toe project. So in the previous video I've shown you how to set up this array within the JavaScript document that allows me to click on the individual cells and update their position within this master array that's within the document. But of course that's not actually showing up the individual images on this grid, it's just all happening in the background. So that's what I want to work on just now. Now first of all, Let's get rid of all this. Let's get rid of these manually added circles and crosses. So to do that, I go back into the HTML document and I just get rid of the extra class that I added. So I can get rid of those leaving it just as cell, which is just going to leave it blank. So if I save this again, you can see they're all disappeared. Now we go back into the script and we can add in an extra function to draw those markers on the screen. So the previous function I created was place marker. Now we can just get rid of this console log and instead of console logging, what I'm going to be doing anytime I've clicked, what's a little space in there. As soon as I've clicked, I want to then call the draw markers function. So this function just places the marker inside my array, but then this function that I'm going to be calling, well, this draws all the markers onto the screen, onto this grid here. So let's define that function. I'll add a little comment here to say create function for drawing player markers and it's going to be function draw markers it doesn't need to take any arguments it basically just takes this array and it works out from here which of these cells need to have circles and which of them need to have crosses so to do that i'm going to use a couple of for loops i'm basically just going to iterate over this board data array and I'm gonna look at each cell one by one. I'm gonna say, is it a zero? Is it a one? Is it a minus one? And based on that, I'm gonna tell it what to put into these grids. So let's go down to this function and add in some for loops. First of all, I'll add a comment to say, iterate over rows. And this for loop is gonna say, let row equal zero. So we'll start at position zero and continue until as long as row is less than three, because that's how many rows I've got. And this should be a semicolon, not a comma. And then lastly, I need to just increase row by one. So this is going to go through the rows 0, 1, 2. And as it does that, it's going to go through this array. So this is my row 0, this is row 1, this is row 2. But that is going to return a smaller array inside it. Because each of these arrays, well that master array has three smaller arrays inside it. So as I go through each of the rows, I then need to go through... The individual columns within it and that's going to pick out these one by one values so that needs a second for loop and this one is going to say the same thing but it's going to be for columns so column equals zero column is less than three and column is increased by one actually let's add a comment just to separate those two out so this is going to say iterate over columns so as it iterates over them I wanted to then look at each of these ones and say, what is that number? Well, let's add an if statement here. We'll say, check if it is player one's marker. So if board data at index row and index column, if that is equal to one, which means that player one's marker is in there, well then I want to go back into my HTML document. I want to figure out which of these cells that is, and I want to add the corresponding marker to it. But remember that my rows and columns, they go from zero up to two, whereas I've got nine cells. So these go from zero to eight. So I need to correlate those backwards, which essentially is going to be the reverse of what I've done here. When I took the index to start with, I minus the column number and divided it by three. Well, I'm just going to do the reverse here. So I'll add a comment to say update, oops, update cell class to add a cross. And I take those cell elements. Remember, this is what I've called through right at the start here when I pulled in the cell elements from the DOM. So cell elements variable is all of these individual cells. So I take the cell elements and then I need to know which one of them it is. Well, it's going to be this little equation here. Row multiplied by three plus column. 
So that's going to take those from zero to two, those column numbers and row numbers from here and correlate that to the corresponding cell on my individual HTML document. And then I need to add it the additional class. So I need to say dot class list dot add the class of cross. So what that is then going to do is when I click on it, it's going to add cross at the end of one of these cells and that's going to draw the cross on for me. So let's try this. If I click here and here and here, you can see it's adding, well, well it's kind of adding crosses in most of them. The reason it's not adding or letting me add it in the other ones is because it already knows there's a circle there. It's just I haven't drawn them. So let's just copy this down and do the exact same thing for circles. So that one closes out. And then I add an else statement here. So we say else if, and I can actually just copy this down because now instead of looking for it to be equal to one, it needs to be equal to minus one because remember that's the other player. So if that's the case, then again, add a comment to say update cell class to add a circle. And that's going to be done in the exact same way. So we copy that down, but instead of it saying cross, it just says circle. So if I save this, it refreshes, and now I should be able to put in markers in all of these different positions. So now to actually see what's going on within the HTML document, if I refresh this, just to clear all those markers off, and I open up the DOM here, so you can see each of these divs, or each of these sections has got a class of cell at the moment. They don't have circle or cross next to them. But as soon as I click, you can see it adds on the little additional class. And that's what's telling it to draw these either circles or crosses on the screen. It's taking the information from this array in here, passing it back into the HTML document to update the classes. And that's what's driving these coming up on the screen. But you may notice there's a slight issue here, which is that once one of the players has won, for example, crosses of one here, I can actually keep playing. I can keep putting markers down. And that's because there's no game over condition in here yet. So essentially, as long as there's a free space to click on, it's going to let me keep clicking. So let's address that now. To do that, I'm going to add in an additional function. So within my place marker function, at the moment, I'm just calling draw markers. Actually, I'll add a little comment just before it to say, update the screen with markers. But I want to add a second function I'm going to call. So every time I click to add a marker on, I want to draw them. But then I also want to check if anyone has won. And this is going to be my additional function, which is going to be check result. So let's go down here and add in this new function. So add a comment to say, create function for checking the result of the game. And this is going to be called function, just the same as above, check result. It doesn't need to take any arguments here or any variables within it. Now this function is going to be split up into different sections because there are different conditions that I need to look out for, for a game over. So for example, a player could put all their markers in a row or in a column diagonally, or it could just be a draw. So for example, if I was to go into the console now, and let's just say console log the board data information. So we'll console log that. We can see all of this corresponds to what's going on here. So for example, we can say that the crosses have won. I mean, in this case, we've kind of got a mess, but we can say that the crosses have met the win condition in the row. So we've got a one, a one, a one. If I was to add these up, I would get a three. The only way you can get a three within the row is if player one has put their markers within that row. There are no zeros in there, or rather there are no circles in there. The same goes for player two, which uses negative ones. So if this condition here is a win, you can see he's got a minus one, minus one, minus one. If that adds up to minus three, then that means that player two has put all of their circles within a row. So this hopefully should explain why I've used player one and player minus one, because what I can now do is basically just go through each row and column and diagonal and add them up and then see if they add up to a three, well then that means that player one has put a cross in each of those cells, because that's the only way you could add up to a three. Likewise, if it's a minus three, then it means all of those cells are filled with circles, player two's marker. So let's get rid of this and start writing this function. So first of all, I had a little comment here to say, check rows and columns. And what I'm going to have to do is just iterate through them. 
So we'll add a for loop here. I'll say let i equals zero. So it's just a, a the variable name doesn't matter here. So I've just called it i. It needs to continue until it reaches three, and it needs to increase by one each iteration. And what I now need to do is just start summing up each of the rows and each of the columns. I need to add up each of the cells within them to see if they've hit three or minus three. So let's add a couple of new variables. Row sum is going to equal my board data. And I, because I'm iterating through the rows, first of all, or rather I'm, I'm counting up the rows with this variable here, I can iterate through them. So I can say row i column zero it needs to be added up with, just copy this across. And I'll type all this out and it'll, it'll make a little bit more sense when I've done it. And we'll just change that to a one and that to a two. So at the first iteration, this variable is going to be zero. So it's going to say a row zero, cell zero, which is this top left, row one, cell, uh, sorry, row zero, cell one. So that's the second one. And then row zero, cell two, this third one. Add them up and then you get this row sum variable. So I just do the exact same thing now for columns. And because I'm iterating three times, it's going to go through each of the rows, each of the columns, and tell me what the sums are within them. So let's just change that to call sum, and then I need to swap these around. So it's going to be exactly the same, but in the reverse order. So it's now column I, so it's row one, column I, row two, column I. Okay, so that's going to give me the sums for each of the rows in each of the columns. And with those calculated, I can then add an if statement. I can say if one of those, so if row sum is equal to three, or if the column sum is equal to three, that means that player one, whose marker is a one, has managed to fill either a row or a column completely with their own marker, because that's the only way you can get them to add up to a three. If player two has put something in there, it would take one away. It would be a negative one. So if it's a three, then that means that the player one has put all of their markers in and therefore they've won. So player one wins. So for now, let's just say console log player one wins. And now we can add an else statement. So else if, well, just copy this, but change it from a three to a minus three which means that player two has managed to put all of their markers within a row or a column. So if that's the case, then it's going to be player two that wins. So we'll just change this, player two wins, and then console log player two wins. Now, before I go too much further, let's just test this out. So we'll refresh that and let's console, bring up the console here. So we'll go x0, x0, player one wins. Remember, I can keep playing. so it records this one as well, so it says player two wins. So I know the rows are working correctly. Now let's try the columns. Player one wins, player two wins. Okay, excellent. So the rows and the columns are working correctly. Now I need to look at the diagonals because if I try diagonals, well, nothing happens. They don't actually work yet. They're gonna be handled in the exact same way. All I'm going to do is add them up manually. So I'll add up one diagonal, the other diagonal. If it's equal to three, player one's one. If it's equal to minus three, player two is one. So let's add a little comment here and say check diagonals and add new variables for it. So there's going to be two diagonals. Diagonal sum one. And you know, I'm just gonna copy from up here because it's kind of the same code. So rather than having this I variable, it's actually going to be zero, zero, top left corner, one, one, which is the middle and two, two, bottom right corner. So that's one of my sums. Now let's copy that and do the other diagonal for it. Diagonal sum two is going to be zero, two, one, one, two, zero. And actually, can I just copy this down here instead? So underneath we say, if diagonal sum, so we'll get rid of this. If diagonal sum, sum one is equal to three or diagonal sum two is equal to three, then player one wins. I think my indentation is all gone a little bit. So shift all this back a little. There we go. Else if, copy these down, diagonal sum one is minus three or diagonal sum 
2 is minus 3, then player 2 wins. So let's just try this out and go cross, cross, cross. There we go, player 1 wins. And now let's select, let's go diagonal in the other way with the circles. Player 2 wins. Okay, so actually all of my win conditions are there now. However, the one condition that's still missing is a tie. So let's add that last one in. And a comment to say check for a tie. Now a tie is only going to happen when all of the cells are filled and nobody is won. So that's why we're doing it right at the end. I'm going to need to make sure that I add returns into each of these checks. So if one of the players has won, then the game finishes. But for now, it just continues on. I can just keep adding crosses and circles. But at this point here, I should, well, I'm not going to have a tie because player two is won. But because I filled everything out, I should then be able to register a tie if none of the other conditions are met. So basically what I want to do is look through each of these lists and see if there are any zeros left in them. Because remember, as soon as I put a marker in, it goes to a one or a minus one. So if there are no zeros left, then that means there are no cells left to play. So we'll add an if statement and we'll just go through each of the rows. So board data zero, well, that's going to be, if we go scroll up, that's going to be this row here. I need to check whether there's a zero inside it. So I can say if board data dot index of zero, so it's basically saying at which point within this row is there an ind uh, is there a value of zero? If there aren't any zeros, it's going to return a minus one. So if that's the case, then I know that there's no zeros left within the first row. So then I just repeat it again. So I'll add this and I'll repeat it again for the next row where we go to row one and we check for index of zero and we say, well, there isn't one there either. So we'll do it one last time on row two. So if none of those conditions are met, or rather all of those conditions are met, meaning that there are no zeros left, well, uh, oops, let's actually get rid of that. Then we just say it's a tie, so console log tie. Now let's see if I can simulate this without actually ending the game for one of them. So let's go X, circle, cross, circle, cross, circle, cross, circle, cross. There we go. So nobody has won and we've got a tie and it's registered it. So the functionality of the game is 80% there, I would say. There are a couple of things still missing though. One of the main ones being that you can keep playing once one of the players has won. So in this case, I can just keep putting it. So now we've got player one has won and player two has also won. So I need to add a game over condition. I need to display some text to say who has won and then add a little button to allow me to restart because right now I'm to keep refreshing every time I want to replay, but it'd be nice to have a button that just resets everything back to normal. So I'm going to do that in the next video. For now, if you found this useful, then please leave a like and feel free to subscribe. Thanks for watching.